Notice the dog like Cerebus with multiple heads and the pitchfork, which I told you was a symbol of Freemasonry, as well as the Nazi symbol on the flag. Notice you had a Christ and an Antichrist, the balance, the equilibrium, the triangle, the triangle of mind, body, and soul, and so on. Mother, father, and son, and so on. And we continue. I'm going to read to you chapter 9 from Zacharias Sitchin's Genesis Revisited. By tracing Hebrew words in the Bible through their Akkadian stem to the Sumerian origin, it has been possible to understand the true meaning of biblical tales, especially those in the book of Genesis. The fact that so many Sumerian terms had come had more than one meaning, mostly but not always derived from a common original pictograph, constitutes a major difficulty in understanding Sumerian and requires reading them carefully in context. On the other hand, the prospect propensity of Sumerian writers to use that for frequent plays of words makes their tense and intelligent readers joy. Notice the play on words. Dealing, for example, with the biblical tale of the upheavaling of Sodom and Gomorrah, the war of gods and men, I pointed out that the notion that Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt when she stayed back to watch what was happening in fact meant pillar of vapor in the original Sumerian terminology. Since salt was obtained in Sumer from vapor-filled swamps, the original Sumerian term Nimur came to mean both salt and vapor. Poor Lot's wife was vaporized, not turned into salt, by the nuclear blast that caused the upheaval of the cities of the plain. I'm going to cite Stitching, but I don't agree with everything he says, especially the alien twist to it. But I'll continue anyway. Regarding the biblical tale of Eve, it was the great Sumerian Sumerologist Samuel N. Kramer who first pointed out that her name, which meant in Hebrew, she who has life, and the tale of her origin from Adam's rib, in all probability, stemmed from the Sumerian play on the word T-I, which meant both life and rib. Some other origin of double means in the creation tale have already been mentioned in a previous chapter. More can be gleaned about Eve and her origins from comparisons of the biblical tales of the Sumerian text and analysis of Sumerian terminology. The genetic manipulations we have seen were conducted by Enki and Ninti in a special facility called the in the Akkadian versions Bit Shimti, house where the wind of life is breathed in. This meaning conveys a pretty accurate idea of what the purpose of the specialized structure laboratory was, but here we have to invite into this discussion the Sumerian penchant for wordplay, thereby throwing fresh light on the source of the tale of Adam's rib, the use of clay, and the breath of Adam's life. So it goes on talking about Akkadian Silu, which comes from the Hebrew Sila, and you know talking about life, rib, wind, wind, side, and clay. It expands on um, the origin of the words, and we go to page 187, bottom of the page, early Assyrian about. 850 BCE contains lines that parallel some of the biblical verses about a man leaving his father's house and becoming as one with his wife as they lay, lie in bed together. The tablet that carries this text is too damaged however, to re reveal all that Sumerian original text had to say. So it goes on talking about the X and Y chromosomes and referencing his other books because this is a series of books. Um, the series of books has the 12th planet in it and it also has um, the Stairway to Heaven, the War of the Gods and Men, the Lost Realms. And we go on to um, the main reason I'm going to quote this book, because I spent over 40 minutes on it, and I wasn't meaning to spend this long, is that we are going to talk about the region of Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia, by the Blue Nile, White Nile, Lake Victoria, Lake Iasi, Tanzania, etc. It's bordered by, bordered by these places. And this place, just like in Egyptian mythology, which was passed down to the Sumerians, the Sumerians were black people who traveled out of Africa, then came back, and were still black when they got there, and the, the statues and the pyramid texts proves that. And we, we go on to show you that on page 192, these discoveries meant more than finding a new fossil. They unlocked the door to nature's secret laboratory, the highway where Mother Nature keeps forging ahead with the evolutionary march that has led from mammal to primate to great apes to hominids. This place was the Rift Valley. 
that slashes through Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. Part of the rift system that begins in the Jordan Valley and the Dead Sea in Israel includes the Red Sea and runs all the way to southern Africa. So notice how Israel and Africa is intertwined, not just by trade routes, not just by religion and the migration of peoples, but also by the Rift Valley. I ain't playing with you. We go on. It goes on to talk about John Hopkins University and University of Cal Berkeley, Tim White, J. Desmond Clark, and a lot of other studies done on these things, and as well as their scholarly debates and museums. But we're not going to get into that. We don't have time. We're going to go on to the next book, Zachary Stitchin, The Twelfth Planet. I'm going to give you three quick references and slap through Chino Achebe and.